If you live in the Midwest or Northeast portions of the United States, you're probably familiar with a lot of the invasive plants that you encounter. Large portions of my property are wooded, they're natural, but the problem is they're getting overtaken by species such as the Maro's honeysuckle, autumn olives. So I was brainstorming this morning of how I can make use of these invasive plants. And I came up with some pretty cool ideas, so I hope you stick around for this whole video because we're gonna take all these invasive plants, we're gonna chop them down, we're gonna free up this understory that's gonna allow us to plant stuff such as apple trees, pawpaws, who knows what's gonna pop up once the light can actually reach the bottom of this floor. All the material, once we're done with this, we're gonna use it. Look at all these leafy greens here that are gonna make a nice mulch in my garden these hollow stems here. We're gonna be able to drill those out, make some mason bee houses. We're gonna be able to make some biochar, some potash. There's gonna be no waste here. We're helping the environment, we're helping our garden. We're just making things better all around. Enemy number one in this wooded area is going to be this invasive honeysuckle. Now, although the pollinators do love this plant, it does shade out everything. This wild apple tree has been struggling, trying to reach for the canopy because all this time these honeysuckles have been shading it out. I can tell this is not the native honeysuckle because I cut it and it has a hollow stem. You can see this area where we've already started. Just by removing one of these honeysuckle bushes, I've freed up all this space. Some of the woodier materials I'm just taking, I'm laying on the ground to feed the native soil. And even though it is native, I'm taking a lot of the Virginia creeper down because it is just overtaking the canopy of all these large trees and suffocating some of these smaller trees like the dogwoods. You can see here just how large these honeysuckles get. Look at the size of this stem coming out of the ground here, and this is not even the biggest one. I'm only using two different tools for this whole entire process. The one is the Felco 8 pruners I always talk about. They're a little expensive, $50, $60, but these are the best pruners money can buy, and they're probably going to last you forever. The second tool I'm using is just this 9-inch Samurai saw. I've got a bigger one, but the 9-inch is going to be fine for this. It's very sharp, so be careful. You can find all these products linked in the description below in my Amazon store, as well as other products that I personally own and use and endorse. So I've already taken the pruners. I've opened up the spot here so I can access the stump of this tree. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna go all the way down at first, but I'm gonna come up a little higher here and I'm just gonna cut this whole thing down. This isn't even the biggest one here. Look at all the biomass we have here. Look how open this area is now. But then look at all this. We got plenty more to take out. Behind me is another very aggressive non-native plant. And this plant is really hated by a lot of people. And for good reason, it kind of takes over a whole entire area. It's like a pioneer plant. If you get disturbed areas like in the brush or on the borders of woodlands, you're probably gonna have autumn olives pop up. The birds actually eat the berries and plant them. Autumn olive has these shiny leaves like this. If you look on the underside, they're almost silver in color. And they also get these nasty thorns. There is a positive side to autumn olive. It's actually a nitrogen fixer. So when I come through and cut these autumn olives off, they're actually going to pump nitrogen into the soil and it's gonna help all the native plants around it. So although the pollinators really enjoy these plants and the autumn olive is a nitrogen fixer, it's making the soil better around it. The problem is the aggression of these plants. So there's a difference between invasive and aggressive. Sometimes people call native plants invasive because they spread a lot. That's not the case. To be an invasive, you have to be not native. Like these honeysuckles are not native to Michigan, neither is autumn olive. And besides the fact that they spread by their berries and the birds plant them everywhere, a lot of these plants also have a suckering habit. The roots will come out and send up new shoots. That allows them to take over a space so fast that none of the native plants can pop up underneath because they're shaded out. 
So we're gonna get to clearing out a lot of this stuff here and then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do in this area. Then we're gonna head over to the garden and show you what we're gonna do with some of the plant scraps. I did come across another plant that I'll be removing when I find it. And that is the Multiflora Rose. This big nasty guy with all these thorns on here. These things get pretty big and start to take over. I'm also starting to implement chop and drop here. I've got a giant pile going on. So I wanted to give some back to the woods here. So a lot of this stuff I'm just tossing on the ground. Look at this, this apple tree has not seen light in a very long time. It was completely buried. Now it's open. There's even more left to take out here. Now is a good time to start processing this giant pile I got here. So I'm gonna start out by going through here and taking every branch, all this green fresh growth, I'm going to strip it off and I'm going to fill this garbage can. Now it's gonna take a while, but in the end it's gonna be worth it. We got a lot of this process. We still got some work to do. This I'm going to chip into wood chips. This is some of the newer growth here with a little bit of the leaves on there. This is going to mulch my walkways. And then here are the new growth and leaves I took off of some of the branches that we're going to use to mulch. These areas we're not planting this year. Just too much weed pressure. We're just going to try to reclaim them. This bed here, I ran out of leaves in the fall. There's a little cardboard in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm just going to coat this entire bed with these. It's gonna go ahead and do a nice even layer across this whole thing. I'm just using these in this bed. I'm gonna do some heavy radish cover cropping in the other beds. Since we are not planting in here, it's got all season to break down. As the season progresses, we'll be adding all kinds of good stuff in here. Some burdocks, some comfrey. It's nice and thick to feed this soil. And here's the mulch for my pathways. I can just take this and stack it on here and step on it. It's a little springy when it first goes down. I'm going to help suppress some of the weeds that are popping up in here. Then when this is all done, I'll come back through here and put a thick layer of wood chips on here. Here's a mason bee house I had just constructed. So I could take these honeysuckle stems and they already got a nice pilot hole in there. I could take a quarter inch drill bit, drill from each side and make these hollow. These are not honeysuckle. These are mostly pokeweed and some wild blue lettuce. Any woody hollow stem plant will work. Let's head back in here now. We're gonna plant some seeds. I got some stratified pawpaw, some apple seeds that started sprouting in the fridge. So we're just gonna go ahead, find a nice open spot here, make a little divot in here, pull seed in there, and we'll see what happens. That is just a trigger. And then over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in a pawpaw seed for good luck. So we're gonna go through here and basically just grill a plant some seeds around here. A lot of them might not come up, who knows? Maybe in a few years we'll see some stuff growing. We'll do a second round of seeds later because we are facing very odd spring drought conditions here in Michigan. I'm not expecting rain for another two weeks and we only had one rainstorm and before that it was probably about a month before we had any rain. But clearing out all these invasive plants really brings new opportunity. These dogwoods can now finally get some sun and grow. I'd like to do some work in here. So the American chestnuts, these giant bushes I got here, can actually get a little more sun, produce more nuts. Same here with this massive red elderberry that we got growing. I've got these in a couple places, but just look how big that elderberry is coming out of the ground. It's got some new shoots coming up. This is all dead growth because it is kind of shaded in here. With some more light, this thing could really thrive. Some more tending I can take care of here too is this staghorn sumac is getting kind of sloppy. It looks like it's got some kind of disease. 
you can see with the lack of leaves up here, the dogwoods are really coming up. I'm probably going to thin out some of these dogwoods because they are kind of covering everything up. And there are a couple more wild apples that are reaching for light. I always find cool new stuff every time I walk through here. I have quite a few elm trees on my property and they seem relatively healthy. And that's good to see trees this size growing healthy with the elm disease that's taken out a lot of the elms. I did some heavy cleanup in this area a couple years ago. You can see there's some new cherry trees growing in here. Got this big wild cherry here. Looks like it's going to be loaded with cherries for the birds. Got lots of black cherry that self seeds pretty aggressively. And when I started cleaning up, I started noticing these guys. Now they just look like regular raspberries, but I believe these are thimble berries. So a little more sunlight, they might actually get berries on them. Maybe they already do, but I don't notice because the chipmunks eat them all. And check this guy out here. This is one of the favorite things I come across in here ever since letting a little more light in. This is called Jack in the Pulpit. Look at this little flower right here. It's like a little pitcher flower and it gets these big red berries on there. Then off to the side we got some more red elderberries. A lot of these plants were not coming up here until I cut down a lot of this invasive growth. I got a lot of cool native plants in here. Maybe I'll save that for another video if you guys want to see that. We got some columbines, some wild geraniums. But for now this has just been how I'm trying to have a positive impact on the woodlands at my house, let some of the native plants grow, and reusing the invasive plants in my garden. Thanks for watching.